Just a reminder that this and all my other videos are made for doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet. My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. So today we have a lot of updated information about things we've talked about in the past, which is always exciting when we finally get more details. So let us jump right in. Firstly, we have the stock images for Series 2 of the OMG All-Star Sports dolls. Now we have their boxes, we can see all of their extra outfit pieces and other things that they come with. Kix Babe comes with this clear rain jacket thing. If not for the collar, I would say this is really cute, but that collar is ridiculous. I mean, her face is like half in the collar. It, it looks really dumb. But it looks like you can also fold the collar down because on the hanger, it looks like the collar is folded down. So maybe that wouldn't look as bad. Otherwise, she also comes with a couple of other fun pieces. Looks like she has knee pads, which is of course essential for a soccer player. She has a soccer ball purse. She even has a little medal. And I do like the minty green color scheme of her outfit. She's definitely cute. Like I said, I'm not really a sports person, so, you know, I'm not really interested in these, but I do appreciate her aesthetic. Skate Boss, I still really hate that hairstyle. It looks kind of ridiculous, but you can notice that she does have some braids in the back of her hair, which you couldn't really see in the original pictures that we saw. And her tights are cool. She's got trails of glitter or something on the tights, and it almost looks like it's coming out of her dress because her dress has a lot of glitter details as well. She also comes with a super cute puffy coat with a fur trim. That is an adorable piece, plus some earmuffs, puffy leg warmers to put on for after her performance. She has her medal. Her little bouquet of flowers for doing a good job, a teddy bear, and a big tote bag. Overall, it's a really cute set. I feel like these would be really good for kids who are doing these sports or anyone who has memories of doing these sports or is doing them now. The price is set at $28.99 for each of them and they are supposed to be released in May. Next, we have a couple of pictures of something new that'll be coming from the Naturalistas. They will be releasing two styling heads, both of which have slightly different textures to their hair, but they both come with not only a regular comb, but also a pick and a lot of different interesting hair clips and accessories, some bobby pins, hair ties, and a little mirror, and of course a crown because you know, we're all queens here. And I think this is great because the naturalistas are very focused on textured hair and natural style, as the name implies. So putting out things that are specifically for hair play with textured hair, it's a good opportunity for young girls with textured hair to be able to learn how to play with it and style it. I really appreciate the naturalistas. I did pre-order one of them, although it seems like the release date keeps getting pushed back, but maybe they'll come sooner than expected. That happens sometimes. But I'm really, really excited to see what they're like. Next, we have a couple of Mermaid High playsets that will be coming out. And as of right now, they're just these concept art kind of drawings. But as we've seen in the past, this style of concept art has been used for other lines that are coming to fruition, like the prom line. It's a good bet that this is legitimate. First of all, we have what looks like like a spa playset. So it looks like it's going to come with a doll and hair play accessories. Looks like hair extension clips. There's a little salon chair. There's a place to put her feet in. So I guess you're supposed to make it look like she's getting a pedicure. And there's a separate little stand. It's hard to tell what exactly that's supposed to be, but it does look like there's gonna be a face mask for the doll. Looks like there's a drink and a magazine. It looks like it's gonna be fun, like a real pamper your doll kind of experience. And then apparently we're also getting a speedboat. See now, this is a vehicle for a mermaid that makes sense. But this looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. We don't really get a lot of boat playset. It's usually a car, a plane, a camper. So doing something different like a cruise ship or a speedboat, a yacht, whatever they're gonna call this, I appreciate that a lot. Of course, it doesn't say anything that it comes with or what the inside will look like or anything. This is just an outside view. I really do like Mermaid High quite a bit. So I'm excited to see what these play sets have to offer. And now we get to some of the really juicy information. We have some updates on the fall lineup 
for Rainbow High and Shadow High. Now, please excuse me for doing this in a separate take, but I woke up this morning and there was series four of Rainbow High on Instagram. And I was like, uh. I was originally going to talk about the leaked names that we got, but now we got full pictures of their boxes. So we might as well just talk about that, right? Let's go through them one by one in color order. First of all, Mila or Myla Barrymore. I really do love the deep shade of burgundy here. I mean, it's a nice rich color. Her hairstyle is pretty cool, but I don't know, I'm not in love with her. And this could just be a personal taste thing. What I do love is her second boots. I mean, look at those boots. Those are awesome. Then we have Mina Fleur, who is saffron. And obviously we've got a lot of Indian inspiration here. We already knew that she had henna tattoos on her hands, but especially in her second outfit, you can see the Indian influence. And I think that is so awesome. We don't see that a lot in dolls, so great that they're branching out and doing even more inclusivity outside of the basic like stuff that we see from most dolls. I really do like her a lot. She also has a very pretty face. It looks like she's got really heavy eye makeup. She's got like an armband on her upper arm, the gold pants, and there's even some lacing at the bottom of the pants. And the second outfit is just gorgeous. She could be a, a top contender for me for actually buying her. Then we come to Delilah. Look at this precious flower child. Oh my God, she's adorable. I already knew that I loved her just from the little tiny one-eyed preview that we got. And yes, she's a very simple design. But what really stands out is not only the glasses, but her albino complexion, which is what a lot of people were theorizing that she was supposed to represent because she has extremely pale hair. She is pale skin, white eyelashes, white freckles, and like gray eyes. So this line, it's not just about the colors, it's also about the representation. And besides that, her outfits are just too precious. Like, like I said, she's a flower child. She's got the little daisies in her hair. Oh my God, she's super cute. She's probably gonna be an underrated one, would be my guess, because it looks like all the other ones have really outrageous fashion and hers is very plain, but I think it totally works because she looks like she's living in the countryside, playing her guitar at sunset, spreading peace and love. Next, we have the Emerald Doll, Jewel Riche. There are kind of bluish tones to this green. It's not like a pure, rich kind of green. It's definitely more of a really dark teal. While the vitiligo is great, I think it's awesome that they are including that. I don't really like her. I mean, obviously her name, Jewel Riche, means that she's probably a rich character, maybe a little stuck up based on the look on her face and the fact that she's got tons of fur, the sequins and everything. I think that's just not really my personal taste. Again, not saying she's poorly executed because her second fur jacket looks like it has real metal zipper tracks. It's hard to tell, obviously, in a picture, but they do look gold. They don't look like the plasticky silver that we usually get. And the color is nice. It's a nice color. Like I said, I wouldn't call it emerald, but it is a nice color. But she's just not for me personally, but I'm sure there are going to be plenty of people who like her. Then we have Cobalt, whose name is Coco Vanderbilt. Yesterday when I recorded the original version of the series four section. The name was supposed to be Connie. So I guess that was just a mistake on whoever had found these leaked names. So her name is actually Coco. Obviously she's supposed to be like a race car driver or something because she's got what can only be described as a race car driver's outfit turned into a dress. She looks really angry too. Her eyebrows are slanted down really far. I mean, she's cool. Again, not necessarily my personal taste, but I do like the jacket. I always love like sporty kind of jackets like that, like varsity jackets or whatever. I, I don't know. I just have a thing for jackets like that. But the rest of her outfits, nah, again, not that she's a bad doll, just not for me. And then finally, we have Lila Yamamoto, who is obviously supposed to be Japanese. I love her second outfit. Her second outfit looks gorgeous. And I love this color too, this really light lilac and I'll 
her name is Lila, so I guess that's what they were going for. So why call it Violet? They should have just called it Lilac, and then, you know, we wouldn't be confusing it with Violet that we already have. Now, a lot of people had said when we saw the previews, they were like, oh, she's gonna have short hair, but obviously her hair is all tied up in buns on top of her head, which is super intricate because they're like braided. I would never want to take down that hairstyle because I know I would never ever get it back that way again. But she's great. Obviously she's got that kawaii thing going on. I think a lot of people were hoping that she was going to be more blatantly Lolita. Both outfits definitely have more traditional elements to them, which I don't mind. I still think she's super, super pretty. And I love the colors, obviously you guys know purple's my favorite color. So that means that she already scores points for me. But her second outfit is definitely my favorite. I just love the big bow with the rope in the front. It's giving me vibes of Rey's temple outfit from Sailor Moon, just in purple. She's super cute. She's probably gonna be another one that I definitely get. So far, my list is definitively Delilah and Lila. So overall, I would say series four looks incredible. I mean, they already had stepped it up with series three, like everyone was saying series three was the best, but I think they've taken it to a whole new level here with series four. And even the dolls that I'm not personally super enthusiastic about, I can see that there was definite effort put in and really nice design choices. The representation is amazing. This is one of the best lines that's been done. Now this graphic also mentions Junior High Series 2, which we already know, the Shadow High Twins, which we know are Naomi and Veronica, and the Fashion Studio with Ainsley. We knew all that already. What I want to focus on here in the center is the quote-unquote tentpole or music line. Tentpole is apparently a placeholder word that they tend to use before a line has an official name just to get it into the systems for Amazon or Target or wherever. But the updated information here says that each doll is going to come with two outfits, instruments, and a microphone. And as we learned in the fall lineup, there's three lines with three dolls in each line, and each doll is going to be $49.99. Same as Sleepover and Rockstar. But the theory that I'm seeing a lot is that these are going to be representatives of the three schools participating in the Rainbow Vision competition, which was referenced in one of the recent Rainbow High episodes. All we know so far is it seems to be some kind of yearly competition and that Shadow High is trying to beat out Rainbow High once and for all at this competition. It's possible one of these lines is Rainbow High characters, one is Shadow High characters, and one is Pacific Coast or some other school. Along with this potential Rainbow Vision line, the large vehicle playset that they mentioned in the fall lineup is apparently a tour camper. I'm guessing it's gonna be some kind of, not like a regular trailer camper like the Nanana -na -na one, but more like a tour bus. But that should be really fun. Maybe Rainbow Vision, you have to like travel for the competition, kind of like you would for like a marching band competition or something. We also have Shadow High Series 2 mentioned here, which we don't know about yet. The customizable dolls, the second large doll, which some people are theorizing is going to be Bella. If it was Bella, I would be extremely tempted to get her. Second Art of Fashion doll, the deluxe doll, which is probably Paris Hilton. But what I want to focus on on the right side here is the Rainbow High and Shadow High 4-pack, which is going to be a Target exclusive. It's $122. It wasn't on the original fall lineup that we looked at. This could be really interesting. I'm hoping it's gonna have like Sunny and Luna, although I don't know who the other two would be, but we have no other information really about what characters might be in this set. i definitely love to know any theories that you might have about any of the vague information that I was able to share with you guys. Also, what are you looking forward to? Who in series four of Rainbow High are you most looking forward to? Anyway, that's everything that I want to share with you guys for today. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, bye.